Hello, this is going to be a very unfancy video on a kind of a quick walkthrough of how I would dye a wig a few shades darker. You can use the same kind of method to dye a wig any color that you want, but this is the quick and dirty way. Uh, if, if you're dyeing a wig from white to a darker color, you're going to use a lot more markers. I'll kind of walk you through that as I go, but um, this is a quick and simple way. So in order to do this, basically I have a wig that is a beautiful shade of green, kind of a Kelly green or party green. And while that's very nice, She-Hulk, which is what I'm going to use it for, has a dark, dark green, like kind of blackish green forest green, whatever, it's darker than what I have. So I'm just going to try and bring it down a few shades darker. So I'm not looking to change the color. So this is going to be kind of a quick rundown of what you would do if you're, if you have a white wig and you want to make it a certain shade of purple. So what you're going to need first off, the most important thing is your Sharpie markers. Uh, I'm only going to use three or four because I'm just looking to darken my wig a little bit. If you are using a pale wig or white wig and you're looking to go to a different color, you're probably going to want at least eight or nine up to 15 of the same color or different colors, depending on what color you're looking to mix and make. And you're also going to need 70, hi, I can use a webcam, 70% alcohol. Uh, it comes in different percentages, make sure you get the 70 because if you get something like 30%, it's not going to dye your wig. And if you get something like 90%, that's going to remove the color from your wig, which is good to know if you ever over dye a wig or you want to remove the color and use it for something else, 90% will take it out. But for our purposes, we want 70% alcohol. Uh, a couple other little things you're going to need are two pairs of pliers and try to get little round ones like this that can grab your markers. Don't get little needle nose or little pinchy ones. Um, you want to use the kind of pliers that can actually hang on to these guys. So get yourself two of those latex gloves or non-latex if you're allergic. Good thing to know, but get yourself gloves and some kind of bowl so everybody can see what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to use a glass bowl, but you know, if you have a piece of Tupperware that you don't mind throwing away, get a painter's bucket from the store, paint store for a dollar, uh, anything of that nature. And um, I think that's pretty much all you're going to need to get started. Uh, a drop cloth or something of that nature that you can make a mess on. And I'll try to walk you through as quickly as possible. So uh, this is day one, getting ready to dye. Um, this is the wig that I'm going to be dyeing. It is a beautiful Kelly shamrock green, um, which is really bright and that's lovely. But I'm doing She-Hulk and she has uh, a darker shade of green. So I'm going to put a wash of black over the green just to really bring it down a notch in color. Okay, hopefully everything is where you can see. Um, so I have poured all of my alcohol into a glass bowl. Um, so I'm going to start with my Sharpies and this is how you get the inside of a Sharpie out. It's pretty easy. Take the cap off. Now you'll grab the colored end of your Sharpie with a set of pliers. And the back end of a sharpie with a set of pliers, twist them, and it pops right out of there with a couple twists. And then this is what you want. This is the sponge that's full of ink inside of a sharpie. So I'm going to do that. I'm putting them on a paper towel. Don't set them right on your counter because they will stay in your counter. 
going to be a little bit tougher because this is a fine tip one, but that's fine. I just want what's inside of it, so I'm going to remove the butt. Same way. And there's your ink cartridge. Got two. This is going to be the same thing. Back. This guy doesn't want to. All right. So now that you have your inks, and you can use rubber gloves if you feel like you're a messy person. Uh, sometimes I do, but I don't, I don't feel like I need them for this stage. I use my exacto knife. I'm going to cut, stick it in there, and just slice this guy wide open. This is how I do it. I don't know if all people who do this method do this, but I feel like it's just a little bit easier to get the ink out because now that's split all the way down. And I'm going to toss that into my alcohol, my container of alcohol. I'm doing the same thing. Sorry, okay, guys. One more. All right. I've got my little inks floating around inside of my alcohol. And you can use popsicle sticks or whatever you want, but um, I just smush them all up so that ink starts to come out of there. And whatever color marker you're using, uh, you'll find that the ink coming out does not always look like the marker. Like this looks like purple. Um, when you're using red markers a lot of times or pink markers, the ink will look really orange. Um, don't let that freak you out. It's, it will dye your hair, your wig, the correct color. Uh, it's close to what your Sharpie is. It uh, just, I don't know why it does that. That's, that's how ink looks when diluted in alcohol. So I'm just mishmashing them up and you can see that my alcohol is now turning the color of my ink. And I'm going to let these guys sit in there for at least half a day, maybe more. So that's step one. I'm going to let them sit in there. And every few hours, I'm going to come over and smash them with a fork or popsicle stick or whatever again. I use a metal fork because obviously it's not going to get stained by the Sharpie. But use whatever you got around and smash those up once every few hours to 24 hours. And we'll come back after that and go from there. I think that we're ready to go with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on rubber gloves. This time, uh, we're going to use them. And I'm working in a stainless steel sink because that is super easy to clean. Uh, you can work in a porcelain tub or sink. Uh, and a lot of the plastic tubs work as long as you are willing to scrub it out afterwards with something with like Comet works wonderfully. I've gotten all of my Sharpie stains out of bath tubs and whatnot with Comet. So I recommend that. So we've got our bowl of ink. Uh, I wonder if you can see it better in this sink. Nope, you can't see that at all. So I'm going to put it over here. As good as it's going to get, I think. I moved it over. There you go. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove what is left of the Sharpie, the insides of the Sharpies. I'll just chuck them over here for now. Okay, so I'm going to take my wig. Ease it on down in there. Now, if I was dyeing a white wig to a deeper color, or you know, a pink wig to purple or whatever, I would probably want to leave that in my dye overnight. But I'm just looking to get a shade on this green wig so that it is a little darker. I'm not looking to make this wig black. So I'm just going to pretty much give it a good little rinse in this ink. 
and you can see that it's looking a lot darker and muddy, which is fine. I'm liking that color. I like that a lot, actually. Out some of my extra. So I don't want to leave this sitting in my dye for a long period of time because I'm not looking to get a really dark saturated color. I just wanted to make this a shade darker. So if you're going to make yourself a really saturated color and really change your wig, uh, I would leave it in there overnight for sure. But I think that's going to do for that guy right now. Now, I am just going to leave the grain for a few minutes. I'll just let it leak in the bowl on both sides of my sink when it's not dripping like crazy. I'll come back for it. And we'll go to the next step. Okay, so my wig has been sitting in the sink, draining for a little while. I have dumped out, which I forgot to record it, but I'm pretty sure you guys can handle this. I dumped out what was left of the dye into the sink and just kind of rinsed out my bowl, so that was gone. Now I'm gonna take my drying, dripping wig and put it back in that bowl so I can transport it around without making a mess of my house as I run through it with my wig. Okay, so I have obviously moved outside and I brought out our wig. What I'm going to do is re-put my gloves back on just so I can handle my wig. Now, you're gonna need a drop cloth. Um, I use a real painter's drop cloth, which obviously I use for everything, and it's probably a good idea to have a couple if you make a lot of your own costuming stuff. But, I mean, if you don't have one, open up a cardboard box and flatten it out or something just so it can dry on it and not damage whatever you're laying it on. The Sharpie dye will dye it. And then I'm just going to spread it out. I'm going to kind of pile it up. And that's pretty much all you got to do uh, and let it dry completely. So I'm going to come out every couple hours and turn it over and spread it out again and just kind of keep piling it and moving it until it's 100% dry. Then you can go to your next step. Okay, now we are ready for the next step of our wig. It is completely dry and you can see, I hope you can see, a fair bit darker now that I've put that black rinse through it, but I need to rinse out all of the extra dyes that are left in it or else they're just going to come out on your clothes and whatnot. So I'm going to rinse it. Rinse your wig in cold water. If you rinse it in hot water, you're going to wash all the dye out that you just put in. So I'm just going to use cold water. And we should be about done rinsing now. Uh, I want you just want to rinse until the water runs clear out of your wig. Uh, if it's still coming out, you know, purple or blue or whatever color you're dyeing, it is not done and it's going to come out all over your clothes. So take it on out of there. I'm going to let it drip dry on a towel for a little bit and I'm going to put it back out in the sun so it dries it a little bit quicker. And we can see what it looks like. All right, finally, our wig is done. So we started out with the party green wig for She-Hulk. And after I put the black wash over it, this is the final color. I am so happy with this color. It's really beautiful. And I have some pictures uh, with flash and without flash just to kind of give an idea how it might look uh, when I wear the costume. But um, really happy about how it turned out. I hope that 
that was pretty easy enough explanation for everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask. And the final thing I want to touch on is clean up um, because you're going to make a mess. It's kind of inevitable, especially the first few times you do it. Like it is a messy thing. So if you are doing this in a sink on your counter or in your bathtub and you get some dye on your counter or in your bathtub, uh, the first thing I usually recommend go to, again, is the Comet. I really don't know how webcam videos work. Comet, um, it's got with bleach, get the one with bleach in it. I find that that takes it almost off of anything uh, with, a, with a hard surface like tiles, counters, tubs, etc. So go for that first. Sometimes you're going to get it on fabrics. And if you don't rinse your wig well enough, it will come off on collars of your costume, sometimes even your shoulders a little bit. It's usually not noticeable when you're wearing it especially if your wig is on. But when you get home, you're gonna to wanna to clean it out. I have found spray on stain removers. Um, I like OxyClean and there's one other brand called Zout that I haven't been able to find in a while. I hope it's still for sale. But those I find really get any residual pigments that come off on your wig, onto your costume out before you wash it. Just spray it. Or if it's a costume that you can't throw in the washer, of course, you hand wash it when you come home from conventions. You should, um, if they don't need dry clean, use that on it, and that should get out a lot of that. Uh, the last go-to, if you have Sharpie dye on something that you absolutely can't get out, be a little careful with this one because it can damage uh, your surfaces or your costume, depending on what it is. So really be careful, do tests first. If your costume is a colored fabric other than white, you really need to test it because it could, um, I've seen it, like if you put a drop here, it would push the color away from that, if that kind of makes sense. I don't know why, but 90% uh, alcohol. Like I mentioned, it will remove dye from your wig and is definitely not what you want to use to dye a wig, but it will remove the Sharpie pigments from the wigs and pretty much anything that you put it on afterwards. If you get it soon enough, you know, if you get it within a week, I find a little 90% alcohol on a cotton swab or something generally removes those stains that you just can't get rid of. So uh, I hope this was a clear enough explanation. I'm kind of nervous about how the camera looked in the sink. I think I need a better camera, but whatever. I hope you got the basic idea. Ask any questions and suggest any other tutorials you guys might be interested. Thank you.